Scientists mysteriously discovered what was the first life on Earth. Earth came into existence many years back. Due to the several processes it underwent, it was able to sustain life. And this is something unique as compared to other planets. However, what was the first life on Earth has been a great concern to scientists. They have always worked hard to explain when and what was the first life on Earth. Join me today in this video as we discuss more about the first life on Earth. History of Fossils by Robert Platt He was going around the university compound when he came across a huge wooden crate. Inside this crate were many rocks with pieces of notes attached. He decided to have a look at them. He came across a smooth, rounded surface. This surface had a cylindrical hollow center. It was made of stone. Later, scientists had a debate to understand the true origin and nature of fossils. Some said they were remains of dead creatures, while some said these are seeds of plants that were germinating from the ground. But for Robert, he preferred the salt crystal interpretation because he had spent time studying the shell-like fossils found in Oxfordshire where he concluded that not all substances found in rocks could be linked with the crystal interpretation, and also concluded that the structure he had found earlier was a bone. A hundred years later, this bone was studied by Richard Brooks. By this time, there was an advancement in fossil study where it was finally concluded that fossils are remains of a long-dead creature. This brought curiosity in Brooks to use his knowledge on anatomy in humans and animals to understand the unique specimen where he first named rock as scrotum humanum. Thus, it was clear that it was from a human body. Even if Brooke managed to name it, we are not sure of the same, either by the bones or stones that were left behind. Theories Supporting Complex Life on Earth by Scientists Lynn Margulis, an American scientist who not only focused on understanding how one organism worked, made many discoveries concerning life. She also focused on the links of the most desperate creatures. On the other hand, she considered the entire Earth system where she considered the Earth a self-regulating superorganism, where she came up with a theory on the same. However, her theories could not be easily limited by popular opinion. The discovery she made gave her a unique title, quote-unquote, Science Unruly Earth Mother. Later, she joined Boston University to pursue post-teaching biology in 1966. This is when she focused more on her theory. During this time, she disclosed that complex eukaryotic cells from which multicellular organisms came were not as a result of competition, but cooperation. Evolution by natural selection brings about changes in living things by accepting some traits with a species. When resources are scarce, however, in eukaryotes, things take place in a different way. When nutrients are also scarce in the ancestral prokaryote, different bacteria work together to increase their survival chances. This symbiosis is protected by a physical association, where one prokaryote would live inside another prokaryote. This gave rise to the endosymbiosis theory of Margulis. This theory was accepted by many and this was something unique since the theory was unsupported by actual evidence. After several attempts, the theory was finally published by the Journal of Theoretical Biology. This bacterial cooperation was too much for people to accept it. This was the reason as to why people looked down upon this theory for 15 years. In the 1980s, this endosymbiosis theory received acceptability from a new analytical technique, where they discovered that the mitochondria have their own DNA that is different from that of their host. Later, Margulis discovered something unique about the chloroplasts. She said that chloroplasts were independent organisms where their genetic composition proved he claimed to be true. This gave people a go-ahead to admit that Margulis has been right all along. Later, she partnered with James Lovelock to reaffirm the Gaia theory, which says that the Earth is a single self-regulating organism. Her hard work did not stop here but rather went hard to derive the five kingdoms of life. This includes the plants, animals, fungi, single-celled eukaryotic protists, and the prokaryotic monera. She went ahead to disapprove the three domains of life which had emerged from the prokaryotes. Genetic analysis is the one that has been approved to the endosymbiosis theory. Prokaryotic life Prokaryotes are simple pill-shaped rods. Their size ranges from less than a tenth of micron to five micron in length. The modern eukaryotes are larger and more complex. They have organelles that are obtained by endosymbiosis. The organelles present include the mitochondria, chloroplast, and flagella. They have cellular machinery and internal membranes. 
all these unique features are said to have evolved by natural selection. Its genetic materials are located in the nucleus. They have a gel-like structure in the cytoplasm which helps in complex processes coordination. The complex processes include sexual reproduction and cell splitting. The eukaryotes are the basis of higher life forms because of their internal organization. Modern eukaryotes survive harsh environmental conditions by encasing in cysts, where they eventually come out when the environment stabilizes. A simple average prokaryotic cell could not give rise to a tree, a jellyfish, or a human being. It takes a complex eukaryotic cell to make life on Earth. However, the complex eukaryotic cells take time to evolve. The period between 0.8 to 1.8 billion years ago is the one that facilitated these changes to take place. What was and when was the first life on Earth? There was a Predozoic hunter who was walking among the ancient rocks. She had no expectations of finding rocks she could talk about for study back home. Her main aim was to document every geological detail of the fresh rocks she would come across. She was collecting evidence to help her interpret the environment in which these layers were forming, and help her understand the geological tortures the rocks had undergone until that time. She ended up extracting silver and labeled it carefully. She packed it later to take a flight back home. When she arrived, she took them to the lab for study. While she was in the lab, she cut some of them to expose the fresh surfaces. After cutting, she could slide and grind them into a smaller size. Some samples were dissolved in hydrofluoric acid which could leave behind organic matter and melt away all rocks and minerals. Then she could observe through the eyepiece after mounting the particles onto a slide to come up with a conclusion. Over years, the eukaryotes evolved and moved out of water to land. Bracellum brasieri a good example. She later decided to visit the Smithsonian Museum for further studies. In this museum, there were many fossils that were fully packed to a level she had no space to go around the museum comfortably. During her study, she encountered microfossils formed by eukaryotic internal complexities. They were found in rocks that were 1.6 billion years old. Germanosphera and Dictyosphera are among the forms that were recovered from the Paleopretozoic fossils that were found in northern China. The 1.8 billion years era clearly shows the expected ornamentation of eukaryotes. Since they lacked the required evidence, they were not the best for giving them out as an example. In the 1.3 billion years era, long spirals and carbon were discovered in a rock in Montana. After the first naming of the fossil, they were not satisfied. This brought reanalyzing of the rock for the second time. During this time, the fossil was set against a picture of the dead animals for the sake of a different interpretation. During this study, they were extremely thin and flattened. They were 9 centimeters in size. The scientists believed that this was a seaweed they had named Agrippania. Carbon fossils were also discovered in grain shells due to the large size. Some concluded that these were eukaryotes. They were larger than bacteria and smaller than Grupania. However, a lack of evidence to support the claims raised a concern. Other techniques that can be used to discover what was the first life on Earth Several techniques have been used to discover what the first life on Earth was, and they have helped in making the different existing techniques. This does not mean they are the only ones valid. Genetic change analysis among eukaryotes can also be used. This is because they will tell the origin of fossils without a fossil requirement. Thanks to the Precambrian fossil that has revealed to us how eukaryotic life came about. However, for us to discover that first eukaryotic life, which is the basis of higher life forms, is a bit difficult. Hence, we can conclude that eukaryotes evolved gradually to bring all the evident changes we have discussed above. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any latest news about the same.